Yo, what's up, everybody? My name is Kid Icarus, and this is my podcast. My guest today is a rapper signed to Batch Records. You can find his most recent EP over on Spotify. It's called For the Moment, and you can find his uh, most recent video, Morning Paper, over on YouTube. Please welcome Danny Boy. <laughs> All right, got the bag out of the way, got the mic set back up, old school mic, there don't got go. the lapel mics anymore, but it's, um, it's what do you call it, uh, faithful, reliable, that's, reliable. that's the word. Old reliable. Old right reliable, that's right. <laughs> All right, but we're back on, so let's just start from the beginning. Batch <laughs> Records, yes. take three, let's talk about this. So it's a record label you started. Yes, sir. How, how did it get it started? Okay, so the Batch Records started off as a hip-hop rap group back in, when I was in high school. Uh, it was a group of six MCs, and just to pay homage to everybody in that group, I kept the name and put, turned it into Batch Records. And I have two people from the original group who are still under the label. They go by Average Joe and Prophecy. And since then, we also added uh, a couple more MCs that I'm proud to say. We got uh, Jesus, the three before the E, and then we also got Bravo 562, Ray Guns, and uh, yeah, we're all from La Habra, just out here, just trying to make it, you know. Okay, right on. Yes, sir. Um, so you you were a rap group back in high school, um, so you've been making music for a long time. Then, oh, huh? yeah, most definitely, bro. Uh, I, we go way back from uh, recording on like a phone and just okay, put, yeah. putting on a beat on the speaker, and we'll just record it, mm -hmm. get like a bunch of tracks, post them on SoundCloud. And then what I would used to do is I used to have like a, a computer with the with the CD ROM so you could like yeah. burn CDs on it mm -hmm. and I used to make a bunch of copies of just mixtapes and go to yeah. high school and just hand them out all the time. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. I did the same thing in high school. Yeah, yeah it's I, the grind, bro. They <laughs> were mine were terrible. Yeah. Um, I because I was making my own beats back then. Um, but like I didn't have any actual beat making software. I was oh. using like a Casio piano oh, and shit. like. A, playing the drums themselves so nothing was quantized so it was all <laughs> offbeat and like i had no idea how to play piano so it's like one note at a time yeah. and weird weird layers and stuff and i mean besides that i wasn't too great of a rapper at the time anyway okay. so like um yeah they were they probably did much more harm to me than good handing like, all those out <laughs> like people hearing it and being like oh this is terrible oh uh, man but yeah the same thing I, yeah i felt that bro because the same thing like our music wasn't at the top quality but it shows ambition and like, that's we're right willing to just go out there you know, yeah i remember um somebody who i'd given a cd to um uh, had like a couple of guys had made a joke about one of my songs like referencing it like hey that guy um and it was like ha, yeah that's cool and one of them like got real serious for a moment and was yeah. like hey but i just want you to know man you're doing something not a lot of people do things and that's i was right. like all right i kind of took it as like a little little bit of a hey all right sure you're just doing it. but like looking back on it i'm like oh no that's that's a legitimate compliment like not yeah. a lot of people do stuff that's so true dude like people are scared to go out there and face or chase their dreams dude and it's, yeah you know sometimes we just gotta get out of that comfort zone and just go for it bro yeah i i mean yeah getting out of the comfort zone that's the key right yeah most uh. definitely consistency getting out of the comfort zone and just you know really believing in yourself dude yeah those like the top qualities right there yeah right on <laughs> I, I i agree the um the getting out of the comfort zone regularly seems to be something because that's the only way to learn yeah most um, definitely I don't know if you've ever heard the, like, Carl Jung thing about, um, like, Carl Jung he talks about archetypes in ancient stories and stuff, and oh, okay. he talks about how, like, uh, the fool often ends up being the savior or, like, a god in disguise, and he's, like, the psychological reason that he thinks that that's the case is because to become anything great, you have to be willing to be a fool first. That's so true. Because you, you gotta... Or in the words of Jake from Adventure Time, you gotta suck at something. That's the first step to being sort of good at something. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's real talk right there. Um, so when you were uh, making music in high school and stuff, um, were you mainly doing recordings and handing them out, or were you uh, performing at the time as well? Uh, at the time, we weren't performing. I didn't start performing until I got out of high school, actually. Okay. Yeah, like right when I graduated, we dropped this... Um, 
mixtape called Volume Five. We called it Volume Five because yeah. all our batch re- or all our batch uh, mixtapes were like Volume One. Then we randomly went to like Volume Thirty Seven. Just oh like, yeah, yeah, it was weird. We were like, "Fuck it," we're like, "Why yeah. not?" You know, it's like just now like, what you call music. Or uh, the, everyone's gonna be like, "Damn, they're on Volume Thirty Seven. Yeah, What's right? going on here? <laughs> These guys have been around forever." comes out once a year and they're only 16 i don't know how it works uh, right yeah yeah um, oh man but yeah it was it was a it was a funny time and we just you know we made do with what we had and we just kept pushing dude yeah it's it's interesting um hip-hop there doesn't seem to be a um scene for younger people to perform at like mm-hmm. hip-hop shows are exclusively at bars Bar. or clubs yeah, like they're up. at least yeah 21 and up sometimes i think some clubs are 18 and up but like i haven't seen any of them um but like i i used to go to a bunch of uh punk shows when i was in high school and like that scene is almost always like all age clubs like they're like chain reactions a big one um the glass house like you could uh, they're all places you can get in as Mm -hmm. like a high schooler and it's kind of um disappointing to me that there aren't more all age hip-hop shows that's true Um, i mean like kids kind of control the music scene yeah um they do like once once like 16 year olds know about an artist that artist blows up the next year or something you know um so it's it's kind of a it's kind of a missed opportunity that hip-hop doesn't have that um that type of scene though i guess like i understand it because hip-hop people tend to be um kind of scuzzy oh yeah it could be yeah depending on the crowd you know yeah (laughs) i mean i guess that's that's not too um at least they're openly scuzzy as opposed to some of the pop punk bands that are uh, secretly scuzzy scuzzy yeah yeah um i feel that so what is um what is your main goal right now for these next couple months are you um working on a new project are you uh pushing some of the batch artists um, uh yeah we all push each other i try to like always do posters for every artist or whatever they do either they're dropping new music doing a show or even uh doing a music video you know i always try to push as much as i could but for me right now what i have is uh i got I'm working on my next album I'm going to call it Back in the Days, D-A-Y-Z-E. Okay. Yeah, and I'm working on that one right now. Uh, I'm thinking about having the release date maybe May, June. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. So not, not too far away at all. Yeah, yeah. not too far away. I'm, I'm getting there. I just need to record maybe like two, three more tracks, and then we're good to go. Right on. <laughs> what's, the, um, what's the production like on it? Is oh. it something that you handle in-house uh, with either you or one of the other artists or is it something that you're um, buying beats from a third well, party i have uh, some producers that i work with and uh, they usually hand me the beats uh, one of them is named chris and then the other one is a homie that i had from uh, high school he goes by armando yeah. and uh he really does really good with these beats and i'm like really looking forward to hearing this Cause like when he he knows how to sample, bro, and like when okay. he does the samples, he did morning paper. Oh yeah, yeah, he did morning paper, and yeah, I was that's like, a good one. damn, bro, that's a, that's a pretty dang good beat. Yeah. yeah, dude, when I heard it, I was like, who? What sample is this? I searched it up. That's the Anna Ross. I was like, whoa, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, the sample damn, so sample based producers uh, blow me away. Like I because like I said, I w- was around a lot of punk, um, so like anytime I make music is very. Um, it ends up being rockish, even if it's completely me trying to make hip hop. It's got it's got <laughs> these rock elements that I can't get away from. Um, but like sample based music is the type of hip hop I like. That yeah. that smooth, relaxed, jazzy, soulful kind of stuff. There you go. Um, that's what I live so for. yeah, finding finding a producer like that that's that's a catch right there. Yeah, bro. When I found him, I was like, bro, you just keep making those beats, and I'll keep making songs. Like yeah. uh, I gave one of the beats that uh, he made me. I gave it to uh, Ray Guns and Bravo Five Six Two, and they came out with a song called "Where's the Hot Rat." That shit's a banger, dude. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, because like when I got the beat, I didn't know really how to flow with it. Like, I don't know if you ever get a beat and mm-hmm. you're just like. I don't know how to come on this one, you know, yeah. like, you know, and then you give it to someone else and they fucking kill that shit. And you're like, that's the way you do it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah you know? I get you. That, that's cool. That, Cause that, um, that shows that you're selective enough to find the right, the right sound for the right artist. Yeah, yes, um, sir. I, I think that that's a, a good thing to develop because like sometimes artists 
try to be everything, mm-hmm. um, and it ends up they end up not being great at anything. You yeah, know, I feel it. Yeah. Um, or or they also, I have you noticed that like there's a there's a problem with um, like underground rappers that are either. Like they're they're stuck in the nineties. Oh, stuck in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, like okay, that's the that, that's the two type. You see the person who switches styles on every song, and uh-huh. it's like, how am I supposed to be a fan of you? Because like I have one song that you made that I love, and then the next song's completely different, and it's not it's not my style. Like style. I can't trust you enough to follow you. Hey, um, but then some other artists are like, all right, cool. You you made one song and it's dope. And then you made that same song like ten other times, so I can't. I have no interest in following you now. I feel you know? that you can't please people these days. You yeah, know? Right? No one's never satisfied. It's funny, bro. But when it comes to me and making music, I try to make a variety of different stuff because yeah. I, I always think in my head, hey, someone's gonna like it. You know, yeah. someone's out there feeling that type of way. Someone's out there going through what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. So I just make whatever my heart and my soul feels. You know. Do you have a um, favorite album? Oh yes, I do. Or let's let's spread <laughs> it out. Let's say three, three favorite albums. Three favorite albums. Okay, first one for sure, The Chronic, Doctor. Okay, Dre. yeah, I yeah. love the West that, Coast. So that that is, <laughs> I love the West. That is, I think, um, an underrated album. I don't think people respect Dre as much as Honestly. they do some of the other NWA guys. Yeah. Like Easy gets tons of love, um, but like The Chronic and Two Thousand One, I think are. Oh. Two of the best right? albums. Masterpieces. Like every single track is a classic that you still hear on the radio today. Yeah. And like, I think that like radio appeal kind of gets like a a nose turned up by a lot of hip hop guys. Like, oh, yeah. you know, that's a radio song. Yeah, isn't that the goal? Yeah, isn't the get it? <laughs> isn't the goal for everyone to like this song? Yeah. And like, Dr. Dre puts out songs that like everybody loves them. Everyone loves it. Yeah, he just has that dude and. Yeah, well, that's what I always respect about Dre, because, like, he went through a lot of his damn stuff with N.W.A. and then mm-hmm. Death Row Records, and then he was yeah. saying, fuck everybody, I'm going to do my own label, and, yeah. you know, just going for it. With that, I thought it was very inspiring, dude. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn. If Dre could do it, you know, anybody could do it, you know? Like, we out here. I trip out on all these artists, these upcoming artists, because I was like, damn, look at them building that buzz. If they could do it, I, I could do it too, you know? Yeah. But uh, I'd say my second favorite album would be the Marshall Matters LP. Okay. Right after, and then my third one would be uh, Man on the Moon 2. Okay. Kid Cudi. <laughs> Man on the Moon 2, though. You're yeah. not going with the original the first, Man. Oh, no. Man on the Moon 2 was always my favorite, bro. Oh, I really? felt like that album really, like, spoke to me. Like, when I was at the album, I was probably, like, in high school. I was, like, maybe, like, a freshman. Yeah. And every every song on that just, like, really, like, touched me, dude. It, like, really, like, speak to my soul, bro. That's that's interesting. Cause yeah. I have, um, I have listened to the original Man on the Moon all the way through, all the way through. tons of times. Yeah. Um, I have not, uh, I have not done, like, a deep dive on Man on the Moon too. Oh, it's, yeah? Yeah. Jeez. I'll say recommended, bro. Yeah. Just press play, and if you smoke weed, smoke a little weed, and just listen to it all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to give it a listen, um, cause I'm a, I'm a fan of Cuddy's style, generally, mm-hmm. like, the, um, the half rap, half singing stuff, I yeah. tend to like a lot with various different artists, um, but yeah, he's kind of the, the epitome of that, I feel like. Yeah, bro, like, uh, Cuddy is a big inspiration to me, like, you know, yeah. I love the hums, the, the way he sings, and just the way he can, like, spit a hard verse, too. Yeah. Like, he made a song with Eminem, and I was like, damn, I didn't expect that, because those were, like, my two favorite artists. Yeah. And I was like, damn, they finally made a song together? I was like, I was tripping. <laughs> yeah, um, I, it's, it's very, um, his music is very psychedelic in a way that, like, doesn't sound psychedelic. Like, he yeah. doesn't sound like Jimi Hendrix, right, like, which yeah. is what you think of as, like, psychedelic music. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's still got that kind of waviness to it where you can kind of melt into the music. There, that's a beautiful way to yeah. say it. Yeah, it's so true. It um, does. I'll, I'll tell you what, on the topic of uh, Dre, though, um, the... What I think may be his best album that he's made mm-hmm. um, is not even his, but uh, the first Snoop Dogg album. Oh, Doggy Style. Those those <laughs> beats on that are Whoa. so like the the fact that they're they still have that like laid back Dre like piano riffs. Yeah. But also like 
real upbeat rhythm right like mur- murder is the case that they gave me like that that That's drum banger. beat in that like <laughs> it's up and like energetic and ferocious um right but he's talking still... about murder yeah right <laughs> it, it goes with it so well but it oh, also man. has those like funky keys to it where it's like okay this is still a uh, laid back west coast music you yeah know? pretty um, much just cruise to it yeah <laughs> it's do you think that there is any um like there's a lot of modern artists that have reinvented the uh like 90s New York sound like oh, okay. like J. Cole kind of reinvented the 90s New York sound I think like very sample heavy very um, smooth jazzy um, the like the funk kind of stuff that Dre did I don't know if there's as many artists that have reinvented that reinvented. do you feel that? Uh, I want to say I've heard a couple artists like you got yeah. like YG like YG tries to like keep that G funk in there. Yeah, I hear a couple songs he done, and I'm like, okay, okay, like I can see yeah. it, you know. And then there's also another artist I've been messing with a lot. His name is G Perico. Okay, I don't know if you heard of him. I've not heard of him. Yeah, he's a freaking dope ass fool. He made the song with uh, uh, Wiz Khalifa. It's called a Billy Jean remix. Mm-hmm. It's they're rapping over Billy Jean beat, and yeah. that song is goes like it's hard. Bro. That's dope. It's like a West Coast type song. It's it's interesting how like people like Wiz Khalifa um, blow up. Yeah. And then disappear. And then they're uh, gone. But they're there, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah he's but still there. putting out music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's on the um, the UFC 4 soundtrack. And yeah. I think it's a more recent song of his. And it's like, oh, yeah. He's still, yeah, he's still, he's still making music. He's still around. Yeah, um, he's still living off it. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard something... I was watching some video about some oh about the dumbest beefs in uh, in rap. Oh, um, rap, and uh, one of them was Tyler the Creator and Bob beefing oh, uh, over some dumb stuff I back heard when about Tyler that. first started. <laughs> but it 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 was Bob was brought up, and it just made me think about like oh yeah, Bob used to be the more famous one out yeah, of those two, big dude, um, and now like. Tyler the Creator is the way bigger name out of those two. Like it's not it's not close at all. Um, And yeah, it's it's wild how uh, like people blow up off of those one or two songs and then don't have um, whatever it is that takes somebody to that level where they're consistently putting out albums that make it to the charts. Yeah, that's true. Um, What do you think that is? What do you think is the difference that keeps people going once they? Uh, make it I want to say possibly what it is I want to say is um, their their consistency well I know I want to take that back because B.O.B. is very consistent that yeah. guy drops albums like crazy I don't know if it's him not taking his time with it because mm-hmm. like compared to Tyler the Creator Tyler the Creator would drop an album like every like what like two years three years yeah like he'll take his time with it because he makes his own beats he does everything his way you know yeah. and it's unique too I think it's also a unique sound you gotta f- keep on going with a unique sound because Tyler the yeah. Creator when he first came up he was rapping about like oh like the devil and like you yeah. know some 666 that, like some crazy that, shit like, yeah. uh, Lord kind of music <laughs> yeah and then yeah. he like totally switched up after Wolf Mm-hmm. He went like you know he did Cherry Bomb and like the beats on there was just crazy. Yeah, it's like something way different. And then he did a Flower Boy. Yeah, and that one was like once again, all, yeah, all he softer. Just, it was insane. I, yeah. just to see Tyler the Creator do that, you know. Yeah, I'll, it's inspiring. I'll tell you, uh, one of the reasons why I love albums um, is because. Like the artists like that who do switch up their style mm-hmm. on each album, I love albums that are. Uh, a different sound than the last one, yeah. but all the all the tracks sound like they belong together. Um, That's a masterpiece. I, right I there. think the best <laughs> example is um, Kanye because like you can't take any song off of Graduation and put it on College Dropout. Like it wouldn't blend wouldn't, together would, yeah, at all. That's so true. Um, but like every song on Graduation feels like it fits on Graduation, and mm-hmm. like his whole. His whole discography, like every every single album's like that. Like you go through the whole the whole album, and it's like these could only be on this oh, album. album. You put them on yes. any other album, and it's like, oh, that black skinhead on graduation. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> that's a strange mix up, right? Like eight oh eight heartbreaks with yeah. fucking college dropout. Like, yeah, it's so you put, different. You put that electronic <laughs> next to the chipmunk soul stuff, and you're like, what is this? Yeah. That's... Um, 
and that's also about getting out of your comfort zone and not yeah. being afraid to try new things, new mm-hmm. sounds, bro. And that, that's yeah. kind of where I'm going with this next album. I'm just trying to switch it up, okay. do something different, new sounds, new introducing new like vocals. Like I'm gonna have like there's some parts that I'm actually singing in. So oh, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I don't really sing, so we're gonna, you know. And it came out pretty good. I'll yeah. tell you what, man. That um, the the track that you have with um, Sabrina De La, Re- La, uh, De La Cruz, De La Cruz, yeah, uh, yeah. Her, the song that you have with her that's like like a funky upbeat song. Yeah, um, I I love that song. Like that that was really good. Her man, voice is it. spectacular. Yeah, bro. She 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 has a great voice. And when I found her, because I met her through a friend, through a mutual friend. And I was like, oh, you sing. And I was like, oh, you sing, sing. <laughs> I yeah, was right? like, oh, I was like, you sing, sing. Yeah, you meet people who say that they sing, and it's like, all right, yeah, sure. Yeah. But that, yeah, e- even when, like, there's a lot of artists who I listen to who are like, I'll, I'll see a feature and, like, recognize it as a woman's name, and it's not a hip-hop sounding name, and I go, like, all right, how's this going to go? Because most of the time, <laughs> it's not great. And, yeah, yeah she she kills it. Kill on, it. She, she's on a couple of your tracks, yeah? Yeah, she's on another one called Times Are Changing. Oh, that's yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That one's really good, too. Yeah, bro, she just brings that soulful singing, bro. I always wanted, like, a girl that can sing, dude, because I've been looking for girl artists all the time, and I just mm-hmm. like to collaborate with different people. I like to see what we can come up with. Because yeah. I have worked with other uh, female singers in the past, I have the song called uh, Things Change, mm-hmm. and it features Karina Soul. And at the time, it was our producer's uh, wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, we got her on. That was the first time ever collaborating with a female artist. And it came out re- really good. I was like, I was no. surprised my dang self, dude. Because, yeah. like, yeah. And I wrote the hook for her. So I was, I was pretty proud about that. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to you as uh, Danny Boy, away from Batch as a group, uh, what was your first solo project that you worked My on? My first solo project, uh, to be honest, it would be what what does it cost? That would be my okay. first really solo project. That's the that's the most recent one? Yeah, the most recent okay. album that so I dropped in what you looking, is that not, what you looking for, is that not like oh, a solo one? What you looking for, okay, so I dropped uh, two songs, it's like a double single. Okay. I did, I saw J. Cole do it one time, he dropped yeah. a double single and I was like, hey, that's pretty smart, like I'm gonna do that, so I had two tracks and I just put them on. Uh, it's, okay. Uh, w- what you're looking for and uh, who would have known. Okay, so you yeah. got a series of singles mm-hmm. and then uh, the new EP. Yeah, then the new okay. EP. Yeah, so like it's the album, a bunch of singles, and then uh, the EP. Okay. And now I'm working on the next album. So what um, What was the... Um, so the... What was the first track you released as Danny oh, Boy? First track, oh man, uh, these long nights. These long nights, bro. Okay. We recorded that on a sound on an iPhone. We put the speaker on and we okay. just pressed SoundCloud and we recorded it like that. Okay, if straight you go, on yeah, the SoundCloud, bro. Huh? If you if you go back, they're still up there on SoundCloud. If you go back and listen to those, you'll be like, damn, this fool came a long way. Yeah, <laughs> right on. What's the what's the <laughs> earliest one that ended up on Spotify? On Spotify, mm, I want to say f- Fly On. Okay. Fly on, uh, fly on. We we weren't uh, recording in the garage where we were with the iPhone and everything. Mm-hmm. We were actually recording in my room, and we recorded that track, and that was the one of the first tracks to be on like Spotify. Okay. And once music. once you had uh, music out, what what was your way of uh, promoting? You started doing shows. Um, started. Uh, um, Handing out mixtapes. Yeah, still. that was the mixtape. Yeah, because when we started doing the mixtapes, we weren't doing shows at the time because we were mm. still in high school. Yeah. So we didn't get time to do shows because we had like school and like other stuff we were doing because people had like sports and activities yeah. like that. So basically, what we did, we just uh, handed out mixtapes as much as we can, get mm-hmm. our name out, follow us on Instagram. Bro, we used to, on the album covers, we used to write it out ourselves. Oh, yeah. And, like, some of us had some bad handwriting. Yeah. Bad handwriting. And, I get that. Yeah, dude. And whoever still has those mixtapes, hey, I appreciate you. Because <laughs> I had two people send me that. And they're like, yo, we still got your mixtapes. Yeah. And it just has my bad handwriting right there. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. I, I have, um, when I did stuff like that, like, I would, the first couple ones I would write myself. Um, and then, like, I started like making art that i would print out um yeah. and it's terrible oh. like <laughs> I, it's I, terrible. I do the same thing now and it's decent uh like i put all my own art on my album art um and it's decent now it's yeah. it's very cartoony it looks like scott pilgrim art okay um, that's pretty tight but uh like 
back then I was nowhere near as good of an artist so it was still trying to be cartoony but it was just miserable um, and I think that uh, I gave uh, Kayflay a copy you know Kayflay? Kayflay? No I'm not familiar no. No. Oh, she kind of blew up um, like 2015 um, for like electronic music not oh, electro pop kind of stuff like she was on K-Rock oh, nice. um, but like at the time I listened to her like she was um, a like mixtape hip hop artist okay um, and I saw her at Chain Reaction with literally, like, four other people. Like, no it way. was just completely empty. Um, and now she's on the uh, BoJack Horseman soundtrack. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. It came um, from the bottom. But <laughs> I also gave her one of these terrible, like, demo tapes being like, hey, y'all, y'all can listen to this. Like, check um, this out. <laughs> and so, like, I'm hoping at, at some point she sees uh, something I make and... And is like, oh, that's that weirdo kid that handed me that demo. I'm like, yes, it is. Yep, that's uh, me. Yeah, <laughs> we out here. <laughs> yeah, there's a few artists who I have given like real bad demos to. Oh where yeah. I'm like, probably not the best move. This probably <laughs> this person probably thinks I'm a loser now. Uh, um, but it's the hustle, it's the ambition, right? Know? Exactly. Like, that's check that's this what out. I was gonna say right there. That's <laughs> that's the grind. You gotta you gotta take the risk. Yeah, um, you gotta get told no's and have a couple doors shut in your face before that one door opens, and you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was there's this band, uh, Real Friends, who are a fantastic pop punk band. Mm-hmm. Um, that I I went to Warp Tour in 2013, um, and on my way in, they were selling CDs. Okay, and I because. Th- because they were just at the front selling CDs, I assumed they were a local band, yeah. and uh, I was in a pop punk band at the time, and they were like, hey, you want to buy a CD? I was like, ah, oh, what kind of music? And they were like, oh, it's pop punk. And I was like, hey, I'm in a pop punk band too. Like, yeah, and then yeah. like, a couple hours later, I ne- realized that their name is on the schedule on the for list. Warp Tour, oh. and so I go see them, and like, They've got a big crowd, and they do a killer show, um, and then, like, leaving Warp Tour, I put their CD on and read the back, and they're from Chicago and oh, stuff, and I was shit. like, oh, this is a legit band, and I'm sitting here talking to them, like, oh, yeah, me too. We're the same, me and you. I had I had played <laughs> one show with, like, five people there, but we're the same. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. <laughs> I had the same experience with uh, Dizzy Wright. I gave him a... Uh, oh, I saw that he was on one of your projects. Yeah, yeah, he was on a single with me and Jesus right there. Um, yeah, I, I went to see him at a clinic. He was doing, like, meet and greets, and I had my Volume 5, the batch CD I was telling you about. It had, like, Smokey on the Buddha on there, uh, Things Change. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to give it to Dizzy, and I gave it to Dizzy, and he we took a picture with it. I don't know if he ever listened to it, Yeah. but, like, a couple years later, boom, we're on a song together. So yeah. I was like, hey, you know, manifesting. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. How'd you end up uh, getting him on a song? Uh, what was that like? Well, basically, uh, me and Jesus, uh, we had this beat. And uh, I made the hook for it, and then I got him on it. And then I told him, like, yo, bro, uh, we should probably leave an open verse because we had an open verse. Like, mm-hmm. nobody wrote to it. And I was like, let's see if we can get someone on it. Yeah. And he was like, all right. So we left it open, and I asked around, and I hit up a Dizzy Wright. I hit up his uh, management. And I was like, yo, bro, like, how much is it to, like, get Dizzy on? Like, and here they were like, uh, send the track. If he fucks with it, we'll give you a price. And uh, he listened to it. He, he liked it. He came back to me with the price, and I said, say less. That's, and boom, got that's done. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, how, you just went to his Instagram page and found his management? Yeah, he has his management right there in the bio. It would be okay. like for uh, bookings, features. That's, that's awesome. I, I, should, I should try that for my next project. Like, that's that's a cool way to do yeah, it. Yeah, bro, uh, Dizzy got back at us in maybe like a week. He yeah. was like, boom, there it is. And I was like, oh, I got Dizzy right first. I was like, unheard. I've got, <laughs> um, I've got a buddy who's in a, uh, a hardcore punk band, or it was, I don't think... They haven't technically broken up, but I don't think they've done anything in oh, years, okay. you know? Yeah. Um, but their their last album, they had uh, Inspect a Deck on it. What? Uh, and Wu-Tang? F- sa- similar <laughs> kind of like, thing. They were, like, they were like, we knew we wanted a hip-hop artist on, because it's a punk album. They were like, we just thought it would be fun to have a hip-hop, hip-hop artist because <laughs> we're all fans of that style and stuff. And so we were like... Well, who could we get? And yeah. Inspected Deck was one of the names that somebody said, and they were like, "We can get a Wu Tang member on yeah, here." That's yeah, I'm blowing right there. Right. <laughs> yeah, you. But you got you got one of them funk volume guys, yeah, right? Yeah, funk volume. That's that's <laughs> remarkable. Um, oh, that's man. 
some of some of my buddies who make music like that's their favorite group like they grew up looking up to Bro, funk volume being too. like hops in dizzy right let's go yeah, yeah. Dude, they were killing it back in like 2020 or 2012 to like what 2014 yeah before something they, like that. before they went under dude and you know had their little problems that they had yeah but, it's it's cool to catch those um like groups and like self-made groups yeah. especially when they're from the area you know what yeah, i mean yeah for real um, when, when i first heard hobson he was just uh, doing ilmai hobson i think like yeah. two and he was like in his bedroom mm-hmm. and he was just rapping dude and i was like damn i was like who's this guy and one of i had like this uh the student or not student but like a classmate there you go yeah and he basically was he liked all the underground hip-hop you know there's always that one classmate that listens to nothing but underground yeah and he's like, he put me on game with the Hobson, and I was like, damn, and I just saw Hobson blow up right after that. Yeah. And I was like, wow, it's pretty inspiring to see that. It's it's interesting, the, um, the, like, he did the no pupils contacts, right? Oh, yeah. Um, it's, and <laughs> it, it was around the same time that Odd Future and Tyler were doing, like, the eating the centipede in the video. Oh, yeah, the stuff. cockroach? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> funny to watch the way that style kind of started to blend with um, the heavy alternative music, mm-hmm. like um, XXX and Juice World would eventually do, you know? Oh, like that's so true. It's, yeah. I, I think that they were forerunners in that trend of, like, mixing the alternative music together. Like, yeah. they were alternative hip-hop mixing with these, like, imagery of more like alternative rock style stuff oh, you know most definitely bro they made they made the way for what juice world was doing and xx was doing yeah all of them like little peep like yeah, yeah. it's crazy bro uh, to see it grow outside of hip-hop what do you think um influences your hip-hop oh outside of hip-hop bro yeah. i listen to all, mostly anything i love the beatles the doors outside of music <laughs> oh outside of music yeah, i was like, like oh. what kind of you got any hobbies that are like this uh, is part of my music i love this... i love to play basketball i yeah. i go out for I, I like to ride my skateboard sometimes i go out yeah. like skate in the beach i love going to the beach i love getting away going to nature like it helps me write better okay like when i'm when let's say when i got like a writer's block and i like can't come up with anything i'll just get out of like my house mm-hmm. my city yeah and just go somewhere new fresh air like you know just really like get the juices flowing mm-hmm. where i can write and usually my spot to go is usually like the beach yeah i love listening to the waves and just having a beat play and just like writing my heart out you know yeah <laughs> i i kind of miss like when i was when i was younger i used to be able to go on walks a lot because i had oh. more time you know yeah. so i would get home from school i didn't have friends or nothing so i would just um you know get, <laughs> You're <go> like, <laughs> I, I, would, I would get home from school it'd be like three thirty, and i'd be like well i got you know seven hours to spend right now before yeah. i go to sleep um and so i would just i'd walk for two you know just wander around um Let's see what and, you get into <laughs> yeah um and like i love the um like you say you love the, the beach i love the like concrete uh specifically like the places where the sidewalk cracks because there's roots of the trees going oh, under okay. it like that that kind of vibe that you get walking around this neighborhood like is what always uh influenced like the sound i i tried to be like it, it's that it's something that to me is particularly californian oh, okay. you know I feel, I feel um, that. Oh, yeah. like this is a place where trees tear up the sidewalk because like it's such a lush place despite it being a desert and a city like there it's all go. of the things crammed into, into one, one space yeah <laughs> it's just like that uh that tupac book uh the rose that grew from the concrete yeah yeah like that's that. exactly it yeah. um yeah it's just enough um uh, it's it's just enough brokenness for me to like it you know it's you it's go. it's something man-made that can't can't get away from the fact that there's something underneath it you know yes, the nature, um, nature's powerful mother nature yeah <laughs> mother. so the uh, the beach I, how do you feel about the mountains are you a mountain person oh too? mountains yeah mountains are dope bro yeah. yeah like you know like um we went hiking up uh, mount baldy i think it is oh yeah yeah like that's beautiful bro like just doing little hikes like that you know it's stuff. snowing it, it oh i guess you guys are from la Habra, right that's kind of up that yeah, direction yeah it's going that way it's um snowing at like the foothills right now oh bro yeah i was tripping on that i got friends out there they're yeah. like snapchatting me they're like oh it's snowing out here like yeah. what's going on yeah i i saw some pictures from the, uh, where is that redlands maybe um 
But yeah, right north of the 210, like right off the 210, I'm getting pictures of snow. snow like, yeah. that is wild. That is the desert right there. Honestly, like, and it's fucking snowing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I saw a recent picture of uh, snow in the where the Hollywood sign was. Oh, like, really? Right behind the Hollywood sign, is like covered in snow. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. I think like Fox 11 covered it or something. That's, I, was, I was tripping. That's pretty wild. Um, yeah, it's been a particularly cold winter. Yeah, I feel like uh, I've been I've been waiting for it to stop. I can't stand can't it. Stand the cold. <laughs> no, like I like it. Like I, I got snowboard past this winter, so yeah. I've been up there a couple times. I'm fine with it being cold when I go up snowboarding. When I'm here and like I'm working during the day, I hate it. I wear like two jackets. I had two jackets on earlier today. Like oh I'm, really? <laughs> I, I can't stand the cold. My fingers get cold. Bro, you know. I, I feel that, dude. Yeah. I ra- to me, I'd rather be. Yeah, hot. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, right. With the hot, at least you can try to cool yourself down with some cold water. Or yeah, you can. <laughs> you can wear less clothes. Like if you're walking around in shorts and a t-shirt in California, it's almost always all right. You yeah. Know, even at its hottest, it's like there's always a breeze at least. Or you can go to the beach where there's always a breeze and yeah, and cool get that down. Nice, the cool breeze. Yeah, um, bro. Like I trip out on people on like the East Coast because I had a friend that moved out to Boston recently. Yeah. He's like, bro, it's like negative, like three out here. Yeah, I'm like, damn, I, I don't know how know. people survive. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, like a whole different world. They out gotta there. die all the time. I would imagine, right? Um, he he told me like it, it's to the point where if you take off your glove, you can get like frostbite. I'm yeah. like, oh hell no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what is uh, what has been a major moment in your music career that has major like moment. kept you going? What's what's been oh, a bro. moment that's like this? This is it right here. This happened and it was wild, and that's that's why I keep doing this for moments like that. Dude, honestly, recently just happened recently, probably like uh, my two shows ago. I did two shows, maybe like probably like three days ago, mm-hmm. and at one of the shows, this. Uh, He's like a he's like a really like he's like a real good family friend and usually family friends are hard to get to because they don't yeah. really support your music as mm-hmm. much right, so he came up to me, and he was just like bro there's a line that you said on this song called it's called unlock, mm-hmm. I say uh, what does life really mean a good wife a great kids a family that's loving, mm-hmm. and when I said that bro he like he looked at me and like a little watered up tears and he was like bro like I really feel your music dude keep doing you like. You you really like I like I can understand what you're saying like I yeah. know where you're coming from like it really touched them bro and it was really like emotional and I was like damn like that's what I always wanted bro to like touch somebody's life and let them know that hey you're not alone I go through this feeling like I feel that way like you know so to him to really do that and him be like a person that's like in the circle but doesn't really support but then actually started supporting and was like hell yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's crazy to see him make that switch, you know, and it just really inspired me, bro. Do you think that that is um, your purpose in making music? Your goal is to make stuff that people relate to. Is that that's yeah. the key focus? Right yeah, there? bro. I love. I want to change people's lives. I want them to let them know that yo, I go through this shit too, bro. You're not mm-hmm. the only one. I want them to let them know that we can make it through, dude. Cause like you know, I deal with my own shit too. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the perfect person. You know, like I got my problems. We all got our problems why why do you why do you want that to be the goal how how is that um is there any i mean were there uh, moments in your life where you felt alone and the music is what uh made you made you feel oh, heard yes. and made you relate to something most definitely bro uh, kid cuddy yeah kid cuddy like okay so dr dre eminem yeah hard rap fucking gangster yeah. you know like that like don't show our feelings like you know we don't feel like this and then i started listening to an artist named kid cuddy mm-hmm. and him was like yo like i feel this way like you know i got 99 problems and they're all bitches like yeah. you know like i was like bro like he really he really gets me like that song solo dolo dude yeah. you're on the first man on the moon yeah, yeah. like what it's like so like sewing through my mind or selling through my mind and like doing all that dude i was like wow like that's so true because i feel that way you know what do you think that is like that <laughs> that makes sense right like we we listen to kid cuddy we we relate to it we feel drawn to it what do you think it is with music that is the dr dre and eminem where it's like no, I don't feel nothing. I like, why, why are we drawn to that music? Why do we want to? Because, like, I feel like it's because we try to hide away those feelings, you know? Yeah. We don't want them to show. We just want to keep them back there and let them be back there. Because, like, let's say, like, the last generation, like, my dad's generation, mm-hmm. you know, he's, like, he was taught his whole life to 
hold it in. You know, guys don't cry. We don't do that. Like, no, nah, we're, we're, we're men. Like, we, we're, we'll get through it, you know? Yeah. And then, like, the next generation is like, damn, dude, like, these kids are popping pills. They're getting cyber bullied, bullied. They can't handle it no more. You mm-hmm. know, they're committing suicide. It's sad, bro. And I was just like, nah, like, I want to be like, like, this, the artist that saved me, like, Kid Cudi, I want to mm-hmm. do the exact same thing and let people know, hey, I feel that way too. But look, I'm still here. You know, I'm still going through it. Yeah, there's, um, I guess there's got to be an element of power, right, with the with the Dre and the Eminem style stuff, where like us as listeners, we're like, we want to feel powerful. Like, yeah, uh, we, powerful, it, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> though I think that I think that a lot of music like that gets this bad rap because um, like people think of it as glorifying the things that it talks about, right? Mm. Um, but I think that there's a, a satire element to like even like the the ones I think of particularly are like um, the new, like what people call mumble raps, like the little pumps and stuff. Okay, yeah. Like people think, oh, it's dumb music about partying and stuff, mm-hmm. right? Where I think that it's kind of making fun of dumb rap about partying. Like <laughs> I, I think there's a layer that. of like self awareness to it. Like they make this music that is dumb rap about partying but they're saying like yeah i know it's dumb rap about partying that's what makes it fun that's what makes it yeah you know? that's what makes the song like we're I'm, yeah we're dumb and we're partying but we're having a good time so right. are we really that dumb like there's an element to that um and i think that a lot of um uh, i mean eminem clearly there's a lot of that like a satire in it where oh, like yeah. he's making this angry violent music where like it's so angry and so violent you kind of get that it's a joke you yeah. know like it's it's crossed the line where it's doubled back into being like oh clearly he's not pro violence because he's not you know getting smashed by an anvil like the wily e. coyote and that's yeah. how he's presenting this in his music like that's... oh he's getting smashed like an anvil you know yeah that's so true and then they get so used to that type of like eminem that when he goes and does something called like revival, yeah. he gets shitted on for it, you know? Yeah. And he's just like talking about mental health and what he's going through and everyone was like, nah, we want the old Eminem, like mm-hmm. bring back the blonde Slim Shady. Yeah. Did, <laughs> I never listened to Revival. Revival did never you, did you I, I did. I, I listened to everything that Eminem puts out. Yeah. Just to listen to it. And I can see where some people are coming from. Like, you know, it takes a while to get used to it. They got like pop artists on there, like they yeah. have like Kalani and like some other it's female like Ed artists. Sheeran. Ed yeah, Sheeran's Ed Sheeran on it, right? too, yeah. And and Beyonce is on it too, and honestly, if like if you really like listen to like Eminem's lyrics, I think because mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a lyric person, yeah. So like I love listening to lyrics, so like that's what I really like connected with is what he was saying, yeah. And more people are like talking about like all his beats were off or like, you know, his flow's kind of weird or anything. But mm-hmm. not to me, it was like the lyrics, dude. <laughs> yeah, I tend to be I tend to be behind on everything, um, and so during that revival era, I haven't heard anything by Eminem really except for kamikaze in like the oh, past kamikaze. 10 years like oh, okay. <laughs> after revival didn't really hear anything until kamikaze um yeah i it took me a long time to get into um j cole like i back right before i released my last ep i had talked to some people um during the time the middle child came out oh, middle child. and i told them like I had fallen into the Nas trap with J. Cole because the first track I had heard from him was um, was Work Out. Oh, Work Out. And so I was like, yeah, I don't, why, why should I bother listening to this guy? He's just one of them radio rappers. Radio rappers, yeah. And then, like, after Middle Child came out, I was like, oh, wow, this is actually really good. Yeah. And then had to go back to his whole discography, discography and be like, whoa, why have I been missing out like, on this I for slept years? slept on this. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, honestly, uh, kind of the same thing with me, but uh, it, it didn't take till Middle Child to like start no. listening to him. I think I started listening to him like after Forest Hill Drive. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was because like I had an ex, and she used to tell me like, "Yo, Mac Miller, J Cole, like you know." And I was so close minded. Yeah, I was just listening to my Eminem, Dr. Dre's, like Nas. Yeah, like, you know, I was I was close minded <laughs> about Mac Miller too. Yeah, like, I was close minded again because like his early stuff, like he was uh, like party a college party rapper, and I yeah. was like. Yeah, whatever. I don't need another Asher Roth. Uh, yeah, I think Asher I got him confused <laughs> for a long time. And then like after after Swimming came out, I was like, all right, I'll give him give him a chance. Why yeah. not? Um, yeah, I was I was stuck in that closed minded state for a long time. Yeah. Um, and once I started listening to more like hit 
hip hop, the kind that's like top of the charts hip hop, I was like, oh, there's actually a lot of gems in here yeah. that I had missed out on. Most definitely. Uh, it's like, damn, I slept on all this. Like, what yeah. the hell? <laughs> I, I had friends when uh, Mad City, Good Kid Mad City came out where oh. like I had heard swimming pools on the radio and was like, all right, it's, it's fine. It's whatever. And uh, I had friends who told me like, no, you, you have to listen to, to the, the album. album. Yes. It's a good album. I was like, ah, whatever. Um, and then when I finally did, I was like, oh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I didn't really get into Kendrick until uh, to Pimp a Butterfly because um, I heard All Right on the radio and I was like, Oh, this is oh, not shit. this is not a radio song right here. I don't know how <laughs> it got onto the radio, but this is yeah. not what radio music sounds like. Oh yeah. Um, back when radio used to exist, have you ever listened to a radio in the past? Like. Oh what 10 years yeah it's been a while since i listened to radio it's mostly just aux cord yeah right <laughs> just aux cord bluetooth mm-hmm. it's like damn but sometimes like i like when i'm driving to work it's like early in the morning so like uh phone taps will come on big boy okay. and i'm like oh that fool's still doing that shit like that's yeah. crazy where he's just like prank calling people on the radio yeah. and i was like damn i went back and listened to that and then i think after that after i heard that uh little that little prank call I started listening to the radio the rest of the day for that one. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that, like, reeled me in, dude, because I was, like, when I was a kid, I used to listen to the phone taps with my dad going to school and shit. Yeah. So it just, you know, it brought up that memory, and it, I just kept it on the radio. Yeah, I enjoy, like, on. early morning talk radio. That's fun. Yeah, I used to listen hilarious. to the Heidi and Frank show on my oh, way to work. Oh, me too. I listen yeah. to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, oh, man, I had a thought. Oh, yeah, so modern artists... Do you know anyone who's, like, top of the charts right now? Anybody you're listening to that's, Modern like, uh, these people are uh, blowing up right now? Because um, I, I don't. I'm, I'm wondering what the modern... Uh, I wonder what who's, like, the big name right now. Besides hmm. the obvious ones. Like, I mean, Drake is going to be on the top of the charts until he oh, dies. Yeah. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Um, but I don't know who else... Um, I mean, the baby has kind of fallen off in the past couple of years. Oh, right? He's no one listening to him anymore. Is JID on the come up? Is that dude, JID Earth Gang? Dreamville got a nice lineup, bro. I yeah, listen to right? all of them. Uh, Ari Lennox. Mm-hmm. I listen to Boss. Uh, oh yeah, Boss. His um, his album with Dopamine and Methylamine. Uh, that that's dude, a great yes, album. Great album, yeah, bro. Yeah, I, 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 I could listen to that all day. Yeah, they're doing good. Uh, and then also on TD, there's like Isaiah Rashad. Abso yeah. just dropped the project. That project mm-hmm. was really good. And then uh, of course you got like what else? Uh, yeah, I've been listening to uh, Vince Staples oh, this dude, past yes. week. Vince Staples hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you ever seen those um, hip hop madness videos on YouTube. Hip hop madness. Yeah, they're like video mm-hmm. essays about various hip hop topics. Um, and I don't know if it was one of that specific channel but i saw one on vince staples about like his absolute like not caring about things and like it's it's super dark the things that like he talks about and stuff um (laughs) and it's like yeah you know we we kill people that's what we do and our music promotes that and like but what am i gonna do like this is my way to get out like i'm selling these kids out by making music like this but you know it's whatever um and it's it's some it's some great stuff, and that's it made me want to listen to his music more because um, I had heard Ramona Park a bunch, like Ramona Park, the Ramona Park oh, album's okay, great. Yeah. Um, For real. And so I'd listened to the Ramona Park part two this week and was like, okay, yeah, it's fantastic stuff. Still, it, yeah. I love, I love um, violent music that is guiltless in its in oh, its guiltless. violence. Okay, um, that just goes all the way. I I think like. Anytime somebody does something, be proud of it. You did it. All you right? did. <laughs> you um, put something out. You put something out in the yeah, world. Yeah. If it's not, if if you're not proud of it, stop doing it. But if there's, if you're gonna do something, if you're like, I'm gonna keep living this way. Ah, you might as well get into it, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I see it. Yeah. So what is um? So you got an album you're going to be working on. It's going to be coming out in May or June. Yes, sir. Uh, you got any more music videos uh, coming out? Uh, I just dropped a music video with uh, Bravo Fight 6 2. It's mm-hmm. called No Limit. It's out on YouTube. Uh, we actually got a helicopter in that one. Oh, nice. Yeah, we uh, traveled out to Las Vegas to do a show, and uh, he, we brought our uh, video photographer. His name is Pyro. Mm-hmm. And uh, he basically just 
did the whole video for us. He came yeah. with us. We, uh, Bravo knew some people at this old job he used to do. Uh, he used to like uh, do like tours of the Grand Canyon, and he he knew people that uh, drove or flew these helicopters mm -hmm. and uh, drove these boats inside the Grand Canyon. Oh, like there's snap. a lake in there, so they're they're driving in there. And uh, he got he got the hookup, and he we did everything for free. It was insane. Oh, I wish I could shout out that uh, that company, but I don't remember the name of it. Yeah. So I apologize. But yeah, shout out to them. They really let us do that. They let us shoot in the helicopter, and they let us shoot inside the Grand Canyon on the boat. And so that was that's, amazing. That's pretty cool. So you you said it it was. Is the Grand Canyon near Las Vegas? Uh, it's like in the border of like Arizona and, and Nevada. Nevada. Yeah, okay. It's like in the border. Yeah. Have had you ever been there before, or was that your first Bro, time seeing it? Uh, no, I've been there before. Uh, maybe like two years ago, I did a road trip on my own because I, I I usually could do road trips. I like to do that. Yeah. I did the Route sixty six trip because I thought I got fired from work. Because, like, a whole incident went down with some edibles. Because I worked for a weed company. And the whole incident went down with some edibles. And, like, some somebody took them, fell asleep. I got blamed. Whatever. But I thought I was fired. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to go on a road trip. You know, I'm going to do yeah. Route 66. Like, you know, I'll be back. So I made it all the way to New Mexico. And my job calls me and like, yo, we need you back at work on Monday. And it was mm -hmm. Saturday, bro. I'm in New Mexico. I just drove all the way out there. So I was like, all right, I'll be there. So I... Stayed at New Mexico what, Saturday. 20 hour, yeah, 20 hour drive 20, and back. And then drove back. But yeah. on my way back, I stopped at uh, the Grand Canyon. Yeah. I went through Sedona. I checked out Sedona. And then I went to the Grand Canyon because I was like, I wonder if I can make the Grand Canyon before the sunset. Mm -hmm. And I did, bro. I, I had to pay 20 bucks to get in, but I was like, fuck, it's worth it. So since being <laughs> up top and riding the boats down, which is the better view? Is it looking down it or it's, looking up? Bro, it's, it? honestly, the view is like unbelievable. Yeah. Like, either way. But when I went, when I saw it from up top, it was like, it's huge, bro. That it's sounds like, terrifying to me. Dude, if you look down, if you're afraid of heights, you'll be like, shit yeah <laughs> whenever go. like i i used to um drive a lot for work and i'd park in these parking garages and like some of them you know they have the elevator that kind of is like on the edge and it, there's glass all the oh, way and you can see it uh, <laughs> yeah and like looking down i could feel it in my feet like the the fear of the heights you yeah. know um yeah i not not good around heights so yeah, no. I, I imagine that is terrifying oh uh, yeah if you're scared of heights most definitely bro like me i for some reason i'm not really scared of heights yeah. like you know i've never been scared of heights like but recently i just got over my fear of fucking going on a, an airplane dude oh yeah yeah because i was always like i was scared of being so high up dude yeah. like you know just like anything could happen up there so i finally got over that fear but one thing i don't like and I don't care. It's roller coasters. Oh yeah, I don't like that feeling, bro. And it's just I don't know. It's me personally. Yeah, but. I used to. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the ones that slowly go upside down. Oh, like if it's true. going fast and I feel stuck to my seat, that's fine. Yeah. But there's there's some rides that like slowly put you upside down, and I'm like, no, I don't want to spend any no. amount of time <laughs> just sitting there upside down. Yeah. Bro. I don't want to hold myself by the shoulders. You know, I'd rather I want all the way down oh, here. Like I want to be make sure I'm good yeah <laughs> yeah like i could do like part of those roller coasters that go fast but the loops oh hell no yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. um oh, hell cool no. uh, what's um what's some advice to that you can give to um younger artists who are starting out uh making music and they want uh to know what to do um i would tell them just be you don't you got a vision don't let anybody block it just keep doing what you're doing and eventually you'll get there stay consistent be very humble with your work and just be very um, yourself, basically, you know, because okay. you're going to make what you want and don't let nobody j judge you off it because yeah. that makes you the person you are. So just keep doing it. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy, you know, and that's the one thing that we're trying to do out here because every artist out here is not happy. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> yeah. We're all dealing with our problems out here. And it may be, you know, Instagram, the life and everything, how beautiful we portray Instagram to be. Now we're all dealing with our shit out here. Yeah. I, like, I think one of the main things, music-wise, how to get better at making music, just make it over and over and over again. Get 100 songs, and then, then you, you'll be good. You know? Yeah, most definitely. Just yeah. stay consistent with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, there's an old uh, Bruce Lee quote, I think he says. Oh, that, Bruce Lee. Um, 
I don't fear the man who knows a thousand kicks. I fear the man who practiced one kick a thousand times. Oh. Um, and I, I think that, you know, making music, like, what's, what's the main thing you're trying to do? Are you trying to be a rapper? All right. Do it a hundred times. And then, then start to expand from there. Get that bass down there. Um, because once you get it, then you'll have a lot more freedom yeah. and other stuff. Like once you get good at it, people will ask you for features. You don't have to like try to network as much because people will come to you if you're an expert at one thing, you That's know? That's true. Um, yeah. So, that, and then expand from there because like once you, once you get that base, you can start, all right, and now I make videos. Like I'll learn that process and you do that a hundred times and now all right, expand to some place else, there you, you go. know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a uh, that's a good pathway to take. Yeah, most that. definitely. Master one thing before you start expanding to other things. Yeah. yeah. All right. For um sure. so w- we've reached the end of the podcast. This is a time I give my guests to uh, shout out anybody that needs to get more attention, any uh, other rappers, any um, uh, any other artists, any rappers, any um, business owners, any visual artists, any, um, you know, whatever else, TV shows, I don't know. All right. Any, anything. Uh, I would like to shout out a couple rappers. I w- they go by Jesus, the three before the E. I want to shout out Bravo562. I want to shout out Ray Guns, Average Joe, Prophecy. I want to shout out No Limit Kid. I want to shout out Noah James. And I also want to shout out Pyro. He's the director of the music videos we've been doing. He's very good at it. You should hit him up. And I also want to hit up or shout out uh, the Getty Boys. Shout out to the Getty Boys in Long Beach. They're out there making moves too. And I'm also part. I'm actually a part of their crew too. I rap with them. Yeah, oh, yeah. a group from Long Beach. They go by the Getty Boys. Check them out. They make great music. And uh, yeah, that's about it, bro. Okay. Any yeah. upcoming shows that you have? Oh, I got. A, I'm gonna do a show at Audio Dope. Uh, March 24th uh, yeah come right. on through it starts at 8 uh, I really appreciate you guys if you be there you know if you want to come okay. out too bro it's going to be in Ontario at the Firewater Bar in okay. the venue right on um, I'm going to give a quick shout out to a rapper called Anthony the Sanguine Gray I don't know if he's doing st- a lot these days I remember seeing him in like 2020 um, but uh, we were talking about Boz earlier, and it reminded me of him because he's kind of got a similar uh, sound, like that half rap, half singing chorus, but with like straight up rap verses. He's good. Um, and with that, that is the end of this episode. So thank you so much. Thank you so for much for down. having us. Yeah, and anytime. Bad right. records. Everybody <laughs> else, uh, have a great night. That's the end. So see you guys around. Have a good one. I'm Tell me how are you? Just let me know if there's anything that